Okay, uh, Matt Green in the tower, by the way. Uh, we've made it to the Nürburgring here. It's Germany, it's the Nürburgring, and it's finals day. Wait and see ha what happens next in all of our action to come on Pulse TV. <laughs> Between th for third and fourth between the Budapest Bullets and Marseille Icon. Commentator in this one is Tony Perez. If bullets take that same game plan, or they probably hold up. Let's see. Game on. Bullets taking an aggressive break. Both cans. Aggressively eliminating two icon players off the break. On the left side of the field, they're shutting down any part of the movement. There we go. Tony, what's happening here now? Apparently it looks like uh, it's opposite pushing edges. <laughs> you got Icon at the other 50. Yep, okay, they just eliminated the whole right side. Now Icon will end up taking advantage of that. They have a complete uh, wide open right side of the field. The two people in the can. Yep, he's out. The mm -hmm. man's gone. And the final corner guy just took a nice little double yeah, tap beating. Mr. U out, over and out. Yes. <laughs> and Marseille Icon looks, yeah, Mr. Job coming in close. No, he's, he's giving it to his partner yes, to do yeah, yet. Yeah. The buzzer sounds, Marseille Aircon. Going one each now against the Bullets. Outstanding. It was a very interesting game. It was a super game. Uh, I'm with, uh, with my uh, uh, present uh, co-commentator friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for inviting me. It's uh, yeah. been working very hard to get this job. I put in my application and they finally said yes. Uh, the, yeah, I mean, I've got my problems with obviously Thomas Lav, the head and co chief of, of, of Pulse TV. But we're not going to go into that right now. But, you know, just... just uh, Let's, uh, you know, I'll talk to you about it later in the bar, you know, it's yeah. not all it's cracked up to me, you know, you get fired in front of masses of people, but you know, <laughs> hopefully it'll all go well for you in the future. No, there's no pressure here, none, no, none at all, none at all. I died, the, the orange guy shot. I shot fucking California, then the Mike Miro shot. I can shoot California on a break this game. Oh, 
Go, boys. Equally aggressive break. Bullets and Icon both losing a, a player each. Icon moving up. Oh, okay, okay. Three bullets eliminated. This is this is the key game here. Because the whole left side of the field is gone. Icon has actually moved up to the tower. I don't think they believe that they know that the whole left side of the field's gone yet. Waiting for coach communication to tell them to go. There's nobody shooting, okay. Okay, this is looking good. This game doesn't look like it'll last very long. Uh oh, oh, if he's gonna shoot, that's a one for one. Yep, Icon. No, they didn't give it to him. They didn't give it to him. Anyway, the game turned to a 3-2. 3-2. Two. Two. Okay, on the far side of the field, far side of the field, Snake. About to have some movement over here. And they take each other out. It should be a simul. Yep, it is a simultaneous elimination. Unless they allow him to leave in. No, nope, simultaneous. Okay. And Icon has done it. Icon has done it. Key to this game was they shot three people almost off the break. Two almost immediately and the second one flaring out. So that was a very, very good. Whatever the shooting lanes are, definitely, definitely make a difference. And the booze of sounds, obviously. And the booze of Outstanding. <laughs> Bullets are going to save as much time as they can. They went and uh, threw the flag in. With plenty of time, understanding that they need to save as much valuable time as possible. Now they are at 1-2 disadvantage to Icon. They're going to change the game plan up quite a bit more, I can guarantee that. They're not going to allow three guys to get shot up off the break. It can make all the difference in the world out here. This next point will be, uh, it'll be interesting to see where this goes. You end up looking at two good, solid pro teams. You can typically break a good, solid pro team's back if you can break them in early. There's plenty of time on the board, but you start getting them down, two, one, three down, you start grinding them down into the ground where you get a couple points spread. You start changing the mindset and the aggressive attitude of the opposite team. Very, very, very few teams in, uh, in pro can ever actually come back from, uh, from a deficit. Joy's known to do it, Dynasty's known to do it. Let's see what happens next. Switch of sides. Let's see. And the kick is on. Both teams and Budapest Bullets getting a one for one right off the break. Icon losing a player, two players. So it is three on three now. Three on. I just got corrected. It is a three on two. With both of Budapest Bullets stuck in the back. In the back line, very good opportunity for uh, for Marseille Icon uh, to advance on the opposing side. This is a real interesting field here because uh, when you get a guy in that back corner, he's got limited angles on infield, so he really can't control a whole lot. You'll see the uh, Icon guy get into the snake very soon. He'll post up to look for a shot on this left hand. Oh, he got shot. He overslid the snake. Very interesting. Budapest both smart enough to take advantage of that. Now it's a two on two. No, two on one. Bullets doing a spectacular job to get that back. Wow, wow. Very good, very good. With the bullets starting out with an immediate one for one, they managed to pull it back with three players. Very, very, very good job. That's uh, that's called consistency, patience, and not doing anything stupid under fire. When you get down on numbers, you just got to tighten up, keep that gun rolling, and non-stop. As I mentioned, um, it takes a solid pro team to get smart about a game like this. Many teams will turn around and lose two players off the break, already be a point down, and uh, you get into their heads and they start to do stupid things and don't play smart. But uh, obviously the Budapest Bullets is not a team like that. They uh, they tightened up, they, everybody recognized their job. Mr. Yu doing a great job going out to the corner and uh, and holding it down and, and actually helping win his team, win the game for his team. Shooting out the whole right side and coming in. So uh, that, that's called experience right there, playing smart. And, uh, and not doing stupid things under pressure, especially when the numbers are against you. So that was very, very good. Now the, the score's tied up, 2-2. Two, 2-2, two. Two, two. so this can go any way. This can go any direction. I think you'll see uh, Marseille Icon understand that they've got to do something or else they're going to lose this, uh, this point spread. Most likely, uh, my guess is they're going to go real aggressive in the next game or two. So it'll be very interesting to see what they do. Let's see what happens. Start out here. As I mentioned, I think Marseille will try and uh, take a very aggressive game this one. Yep, they are going to go aggressive. They'll take, uh, let's see how this breaks. Yep, they did. Outstanding. You got field dominance? Yes. 
They've already eliminated one of the bullets. Yeah, Mr. Lang and uh, Mr. Yu on the right side. Uh, do what do they do best? Working as a team, talking, communicating on the field. Very interesting positioning. Very interesting positioning. Yep. Okay. Now it's an even spread. It's on four on four. Four and four at the moment, okay. Marseille Icon just getting eliminated in the harness. The ref hasn't seen it yet. No? Okay. And once in a while we get lucky like that. But uh, as you say, uh, real estate wise, we're almost neck and neck. Marseille Icon in a much better position right now. Okay, now it's evenly spread. You'll notice in the center of the field, you'll see two teams, two players at the doors trying to figure out where's the most damage. The bullets are trying to lock down the main bunker and stop them out of the snake. As well, Icon doing the same trap in the style of the opposing snake. Looks like bullets will take the snake here very shortly. Yeah. I got here. Thank you, though. Thank you. Wonderful generosity of Bart Mulcahy. Ooh, the bullets play firmly in the snake right now. At a position to cause some damage. Uh oh. Okay. Mr. Oliver Lane going on the opposite side, doing some serious damage. Good job. Ooh, that was probably about a little extra from Mr. Yu coming in there. He left him uh, about four to the head. I think that poor player is going to need some. Uh, a triple tap of the Excedrin. Wow. Very, very good game. If you notice the difference out there, you see two good, solid pro teams understanding that uh, when the down players taking those doors are very, very important. They can absolutely stop the uh, the push on the on the opposing side getting into the snake. And that makes a big, 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 big difference. A good, solid team will understand the difference of uh, where the danger is and the position when you are when you can stop the left side push or right side push, that's, that's kind of tough because you, you need to kind of decide out there on the field and you have a split second to do it. Kind of gauge where the players are and um, where it can cause the most damage. You understand that on the snake, since it's uh, exactly the same on both sides, it can um, instantly change the, the course of the game, especially the outcome. And since both sides are equally impressive, um, you just you, you, you push, you push, you push. Players got to work as a team out there and keep the composure. Not play loose at all here because in two seconds, the whole game will change on it. All right. Yeah, they are. Outstanding. Very aggressive break by Icon. Very, very aggressive break. They are not going to walk away from here. Uh, Turn it around. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Budapest Bullets taking a very, very similar break to the other side. If you notice, the Bullets, uh, they keep taking that right door. And they understand it. They feel that uh, that is their strong side. Obviously, looking at the way they're playing on the field, you see Mr. Yu at the door, shutting down the right side with his counterpart, teammate from the uh, LA Arm and at the can. So, if you notice how the game's being played, they're trying to push the right side very, very heavy. They shut down. They don't want any uh, any opposition or something to be able to just go down the field and cause some damage. Let's play the game. We got five on two. Bullet plus bullets on it. Looks like they may have eliminated another icon. Yes, they did. It's five on two. Ah, uh, will be interesting. And that's a five on five. Yeah, there we go. Very, very, very good job of the Budapest bullets. You can see what's going on. They are. Uh, they're super on that right side and definitely denying him that uh, any contention of the right can, the right tempo, or that right snake. They want to leave Mr. Yu and Oliver by themselves. So that's, uh, that's a very, very smart tactic. You understand this. You normally want to put your strongest players where they can do the most amount of damage and where they get the least amount of heat. Um, typical tactic used in the States. But especially out here when you're playing building up, it's, uh, it's a very, very smart thing to do. You put your two strongest players on one side to handle it, eliminate one, two, three, and then they turn and have a good solid finish, regardless of the other team playing aggressive or not. Ah, 
Interesting little change up. They put him on the opposite door. They must have running to the opposite tape show side. Spectator side. Okay. Marseille Icon coming back a little bit of something. It's a 4 3. Very, very smart. 4 2. Oliver oh, we're trying to push on the opposite side. You're trying to give something back to uh, the bullets. But it looks like uh, Marseille Icon firmly in the driving seat. Okay, we'll see. This is uh, this is nothing but pure instincts when you see a player turn and under pressure and still lose the game. They'll turn around and still give it their best. Very, very good. Okay, well it's a three on one against Mr. Lang. Yep, they got him. Very, very smart. This is um, this is a very, 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 very interesting thing about how uh, how proper pro players will play. Well, I understand the times to move when the heat's on, and uh, they almost pulled that out. It was a very, very good game. Marseille Icon not wanting to walk away from this. Definitely not want to walk away with this with the heads down. So it's, uh, so I guess, right, we're looking at a 3-4 game right now. Still Budapest bullets, but there's still plenty of time to change this game around. Icon player checking in clean. Wow. This will be very interesting. If you think about the dynamic of what's going on, what's going on in the players' heads when, uh, when we're out there playing and you get down a point or two to turn around and bring it back and, and chalk it up and not give up. And that's very, very, very hard. You know, in all reality, paint pose is 75% mental. Your five players have to walk in there with the attitude that they're going to win, that nothing's going to beat them, and that there's uh, nothing stopping them. And they'll do anything to win. They're not going to leave home losing. This is a very, very tough thing, especially in the finals game, because this can mean everything. It'll be very interesting to see how this turns around. We're at a 3-4 spread right now, looking at, uh, at Budapest Bullets. Going back to their favorite side over here, so we'll see. Marseille Icon will probably come back and give a very, very aggressive game if they're going to try and win this. Win for third, third and fourth here. It's a moment of truth from Marseille Icon. They can turn the game around and tie it up 4 4, but. Uh, they have to turn around and get a point back. Good solid pro teams will leave it all on the table. They won't play a defensive game. They'll either take it winning or take it losing, but one way or another they're going to go down fighting and that's really, really... It's the character of Marseille Icon. They are a very aggressive team. Let's see if they do something with it. No. Okay, very good to break. Marseille Icon losing a player, but they're not stopping. They are not stopping at all. Like I said, they're either going to push and take it or not. Very, very, very smart move by Oliver coming in there trying to shut down the strong side that they're at. Whenever he gets to that tower on the far side, there's some, the next part is just stopping the snake, and Oliver understood that. He understands that they stopped that snake push the rest of the team. He's got to trust in this team to be able to pull the rest of the game out. As long as he denies them the snake, Oliver's doing his job. Even though it's 4-4, does Oliver get him? No, 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 he missed him, he missed him. And Marseille Icon managed to take both snakes at the same time. They are firmly in the driver's seat here. Yep, now that is what it takes. You see Marseille Icon turning around, They've eliminated three players already. Bullets trying to counteract, but they will not be able to. They will not be able to. Down a 4-1 spread. Outstanding, outstanding, the game is over. Outstanding.
Okay, folks, have you noticed what just happened? Marseille Icon understood that if they didn't take it and they didn't push that game, they were going to lose it, and they did. Under a gun, under the smartest move in the world for Oliver to come take that door, try and shut him out of the snake, they still ran the snake. They took the chance. And that's what paintball is, folks. You take the chance, you get a chance to win the game. And that's what they did. They ran against his gun. Oliver going over this. Yeah, no, no, he's not going to contest the move. But uh, you take that chance, sometimes it goes your way. When it goes your way, you win games. And that's what you see here, baby. That's 4 4 CPL. Marseille Icon may turn around this game. This is exciting. This is the way paintball's played. This is 4 4. This is going to be a very interesting match. We got Marseille Icon. 10 seconds. This is now. Marseille, Marseille Icon put themselves in the driver's seat. It's 4 4. Be very interesting how this game rolls out. See if they play aggressive. Yep, they will. Yep, they are going for it. Marseille Icon definitely playing aggressive. Both teams. Both teams playing aggressive. And Marseille Icon coming out ahead with a one person elimination right off the break. Two person. Two person. Marseille Icon. No, no, no. Outstanding. Both teams eliminated. No, 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 no. Marseille Icon lost to three people. Oh, Marseille Icon got a, got a two for one. Wow. No, no, no. Simultaneous one for ones. Giving the win. Giving the win to Budapest Bullets. You got to understand this. This is, uh, this can happen. This can definitely happen. Marseille Icon definitely over pushing it and, and maybe pushing a little too hard, causing themselves to get a couple of uh, a couple of penalty points out there, not playing a straight up game. They got two one for ones in that match, basically eliminating two people getting shot, two people getting eliminated on one for ones, and only one player getting allowed to play. You cannot. This is this is pro paintball. It doesn't matter what division you're in. You get one for one, that changes the, the outcome of the game. You get two, you just basically gave the game to the other team. Win or lose, these games are won by the penalties. Just like any any sport, you cannot get a penalty and expect to come out up on top. And Marseille Icon getting two, definitely uh, definitely set and sealed their fate on that one. They played one hell of a great game. You look at a team like that, they put it all out there. They're gonna win or lose, going aggressive, and they did it. And that's uh, that's courage, that's hard, and that's character. You know, I, uh, I've always respected Marseille Icon. They've always been very very strong. And they push it. They leave it out on the field. They're not going to go home losers. They're not going to go home getting shot in the back. They're going to go out. They're going to put their gun in your faces and give it their best. And that's what they did. Unfortunately, today's day was definitely Budapest Bullets. Very, very good job. Very good job. They came back, and uh, that was a great game to watch. 4-5. All were coming across the field. Come over and uh, respectfully come over and say thank you. A good game. This, this shows a lot of character when you see players coming over and the first thing they do is they don't go cheering the box, they come over there and, uh, and go greet the other team and, uh, and that's what the Budapest Bullets are about. This is camaraderie ship, this is, uh, this is an understanding that you played a good job and, and it's just, it, as disheartening as it is for Icon, they, you know, you understand, they're the first ones to run over to the opposite side if they win the match either, so this is, um, this shows character in paintball at least, you know. People say sometimes we're cocky and sometimes we're this, sometimes we're that, but paintball's paintball. Outside of this, we'll talk about it. Have you know, plenty of fun at the players' party. A couple of drinks later. Of course, a little disappointed because uh, they won in third, but uh, nevertheless. Put a best bullets, taking third place. 5 4. Now, this is my turn. I get to call my mom. I've not talked to my mom yet. And, um,. I'm gonna tell her that we just won the tournament. Let's see how to unlock a phone that's in Swedish. All right, there we go. We got it. I wish I had a speaker and I could have you guys understand. So my mom, I'm wondering if she's gonna start screaming. Okay, that's the number. No, oh, that's the wrong number. Zero zero one. That yeah, we're country. We're in Germany, folks. Though. So, uh, there we go. Nine two two. Please don't call that number later. That is my mom's house. Let's see what my mom says. Okay, phone is ringing. Hey! Phone is ringing. Okay, yes, we got a dial tone. We got a dial tone. Let's see what my mom says. <laughs> you knew, you knew. We won the tournament. <laughs> I don't know if we can hear that back home. I couldn't hear you, Mom. What? <laughs> thank you, Mom. Thank you. It was a great.
Oh, I will, I will, I will. Champagne, Tony <laughs> Oh, it was a great tournament. It was a great tournament. The team played great. I had some great games. It was just, it was just awesome. We beat them 4-1. So it was, it, it, there wasn't even a chance. It was, we, we went right at them. It was great. What a great game. What a great tournament, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I love you very much. I just wanted to call. I'll see you in two days, okay? I will, I will, I will. I'll, I'll say that right now. I love you. Thanks. Bye. Now, I think she was definitely far more excited than I was on that call. <laughs> anyway, you guys rock. Thank you very much for letting me come up here and commentate. I had a lot of fun with you guys in Bulgaria. A lot of fun in the Millenniums. I hope to come out and do this again. You guys rock. Seriously. I'll see you. So, uh, is that okay? Is that the sound okay? Can you hear me? One, two, three, check, 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 check. Now, here's an interview with Victor Zeman, the team captain of the Bullets. We can go? Okay. So, hello, uh, we are here in uh, Germany, in Nürburgring, with Viktor Zeman, captain of Budapest Bullets. Uh, you are on first place in CPL now, So, but I'm interested in your history. Where did you start playing, when, what happened, how did you come to Bullets? So, I'm one of the few who actually lives in Budapest. I started to play eight years ago, in the woods, of course, like every other person in a big scenario game. Then we started to go back and go back and the uh, guy who owned the field showed me, okay, there is another kind of game, it's called speedball, it's very good. So we tried it and with my friends we formed the first paintball team of our, our first paintball team. So we started to play speedball and then we started to go to tournaments like to Croatia, to Austria. So we improved and one day Bulez just told me, it's okay, if you want to play with us, you're welcome. <laughs> that was like... Then since it was four years ago, and in the last four years I played for Bullets, I became a team captain, and we are in the CPL now. <laughs> okay, and all, what do you do for a living? I'm 100% paintballer. I work for Die Europe, like East European Sales Representative, and I also work for Bullets. We have a paintball shop at home, we run that, we manage, you know, it's like a lot of work with the team itself, like, like managing the practices, managing everything, accommodation, paint, so I do half of my part for bullets and another half for die. Okay, so if you want something from die in Eastern Europe, please contact him. He will sort you out, definitely. So, Victor, what are your plans for the future this year? This year, of course, like we wanna, we wanna, we wanna win what we can. So it would be very, very good if we could f keep our position, what we have in CPI now. It will be not easy for sure, but we will keep trying. And for the future, like we wanna ke keep the same, I guess. So it's what else can you wish? <laughs> and playing in the United States this year? This year, no. This year, not for sure. In the future, we will think. We will think on it. It's, we have to find how financially it is. So, how expensive is it? Is it more expensive or just same? And you know, of course, the decision is for RPs or our owner. But uh, maybe yeah, we can go. But it means it, it has additional problems. But but I think next year we will stay in Europe. 
Okay, perfect. Uh, so we will see you here in the Millennium. And what else will you play? You are also the organizer of the ECS. Yes, in this year we just uh, we are not playing so many tournaments like two years ago. We just play Millennium Series and ECS, and nearly all of us just like play other events like guest players. But the Bullets itself just playing Millennium and ECS. Like you said, we are one of the organizers of ECS. We will have last leg very soon. So we play these, these two major tournaments in Europe at the moment. Perfect. And uh, what about your personal life? Uh, what kind of food do you like? What, do you, what music do you listen? Something like that. So I get a girlfriend. She doesn't see me so often. I love her. I love her. Uh, she accepted my life because she see what I do and she accepted it. So it's, I, I, I respect it in her very much. So nowadays she's coming to tournaments and see me. Other than that, when we don't have practice, I just like, and I don't have to work, uh, we are going out with my friends, having some parties, we tra I travel a lot anyway, and uh, I like to play squash when I have time, but in the last few months I didn't really have any time for that, and like, I just, I just like to be at home, you know, like, it's like, I go home, just no, don't, don't move out, yeah, just relax, be with my friends, because, you know, in a week it will start again. Okay, and uh, to wrap it up, uh, soon we'll see each other in the Budapest. Uh, can you announce the tournament? It will be a really great tournament over there, so drop by. Yeah, we really hope we will see a lot of teams in uh, Budapest ECS in the 20th and 21st of September. It looks we will have a very tough uh, pro division, like all the major teams from Europe, like, like Syndicate, uh, Nexus, Tontons, Vienna United, Rampage, Troja, Budapest Bullets and Enemy. So it will be very tough. Uh, we will have turf on both of the fields and we will have uh, special shows for uh, the players and they will see at the place. Okay, from my experience in Eastern Europe you have to come to the tournament and the players party, definitely. For sure, that's for sure. Thank you guys, thanks Victor. Thank you so much, I love your communist microphone. Thank you. Oh, and I'm Sturma, fan club number one. Go back. <laughs> Just a second. Don't touch her, don't touch her. What now? You know that we have Slavish Turmas fan club. On okay. Paintball TV. What can you tell us about it? Uh, you know that we have Slavish Turmas uh, fan, fan club on Paintball TV. What can you tell us about it? Of course. I am uh, Slavish Turma fan number one. I am the number one. I love you, Slava. You got a 3 4 1 in overtime and we lost the Milan series, but I love you. <laughs> Again. Explain, uh, explain how, to, how do you become a. Uh, uh, so Victor, can you explain us how did you become a Slava Sturmas fan? Like it's it's from the beginning. Like you know, if you know you know him, he's a very charming person with his sweet Russian accent. So you have to love him. And then that was the situation what happened in London. Since that I love him more. And uh, on a players party, there was an idea from uh, <laughs> Pulse TV, and we just founded this fan club. And I'm the happy person who can be the number one. That's a big honor for my country and for me. So Slava is a really big star. Slava is, is a really big Russian star. Thank you.